Um, so that's that's happening, um, and then we get to Slughorn's party. Oh no, wait. Um, I'm gonna skip the part. Ron hooks up with Lavender. We know that. Let's go to Slughorn's party. Uh, Hermione is a little moody because uh, Ron hooked up with Lavender. Ron hooked up with Lavender, and she sets some uh, some birdies, some birds on him, <laughs> and hoits him. But she decides to take McLagan to yeah. Slughorn's party. But Which is kind of like a big fuck you. Yeah, but, I mean, she just kind of runs away from him the whole time. Yeah. Which is kind of funny. Uh, Harry takes Luna. That's right. Which was very nice. I like Luna. I love Luna. Luna's such a... She's a good character. Weird okay. and friendly person. Yeah. Um, but the whole deal with that kind of party is... Or that party scene is that um, Malfoy was up to something, right? And he gets caught, right? By Filch, and uh, Snape kind of takes control of the situation and brings him out to away from the party, and Harry gets uh, Snoopy again, mm -hmm. and puts on his invisibility cloak, and finds up finds out what they're up to. He actually almost gets caught in the book. In the in the movie, it's just kind of like a, a pan over, and he's just kind of sitting there listening to him. Mm -hmm. But it's so much more tense in the book because um, he's moments away from being detected, and he finds out about the uh, unbreakable vow. Right. So, of course, his suspicions are correct, and we find out that Malfoy's under the impression that Snape is just helping him to... Take credit. To take credit. <laughs> for, uh, like, no. For it's Voldemort. my time to shine, old man. Yeah. Uh, Which comes into play. This in, is my in, job. In the last scene. Yeah. And Draco, you know, is like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Dumbledore's like, you don't have to. I do. Who could? Who could? And then in a way, Snape does come in and take the credit. But oh, that's yeah. Really, that's for the best, so. Yeah. I mean, we don't even get to figure out what, how Malfoy feels about that. Yeah. Nobody cares, though. Oh, Malfoy. So, the Burrow scene in the movie where all the Death Eaters show up and they set it on fire. Christmas? Christmas time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the scene that didn't happen at all? Yeah. Yeah. We have some suspicions about that. Right. We were discussing well, it when we, were we watched it. That maybe the reason they included that is because they skipped so much on the ending with kind of the siege of Hogwarts, where all the Death Eaters swarm in. Yeah. And like There's... the werewolf Fenris Wolfback is like running around. Yeah. Uh, shit got a little crazy at the end. We missed a lot of good action there at the end. That they didn't include. So I wonder if they included that uh, siege of the borough to kind of make up for the siege of Hogwarts. Yeah, that was weird, because, like, in the book, Christmas is normal and a good time for everybody. Yeah. Um, and then what happens there is that we get to see Scrimgoer. Scrim... Scrim... Scr whatever his name is. Uh, Rufus. Mm-hmm who was introduced at the beginning of the book and is never introduced at all ever in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, which I really liked his character. So I was pissed about that, but... Percy's being a little bitch still. Per Percy's still there. This wrote him out of the movies. <laughs> like, you're dead to us. Somebody, God, they should have they took him instead of a lot of other people that they took. Yeah. <laughs> I would have cared significantly less if oh, Percy yeah. was just Kill to die. Percy, dude. Fuck him. Uh, yeah, he's a little... He's a prat! Yeah. Um, Maybe they thought that a scene of everyone getting along having a good time just wouldn't feel right for the tone. I guess. Of the sixth movie. I, I don't know. Maybe. There are some other pretty lighthearted moments, though, so I guess... Yeah. So, essentially, what that whole scene is about in the book is that... Um, Rufus is trying to get Harry to be the poster child for the ministry. Yeah. Which is stupid. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. 
no way. That's okay. Way. Remember that time you guys tried to fuck me over? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me too. Uh, and there's there's this just this part where Rufus was like, "Ah, oh, Dumbledore's boy through and through." And Harry's like, "Yeah, what Pretty about it?" Much. <laughs> Wait, well, you got a point there. What can do about it? That was good. That was cool to see Harry kind of stand up to. Yeah. A, a big masculine person like Rufus and just like not back down. And then we go back to Hogwarts. That's pretty much all that happens during Christmas. Yeah. I guess, like, I guess the explosion's more interesting, huh? For a movie. Yeah. For guys writing movies, they're like, but what if we made the explosion instead? Yeah. What if, uh, destruction and chaos? No, they really leave out a lot of the apparition training. Yeah. In the movie, which I, to me, as I remember as a child thinking how horrifying that was. <laughs> yeah. That you could leave a part of you behind somewhere. Yep. I, it freaked me out. Just get splinched. Get splinched. Now, Harry's too young, so he doesn't even... No, he gets to go to the classes, but he doesn't get to do the testing for it. You're yet. not allowed to till you're 17 yeah, to he's, apparate. He's still a bubble baby. Which is interesting. That's kind of an interesting... It's like driving. ...rule. I guess it's like driving. You're not allowed to apparate till you're of age. You have to have a grown-up go with you. Mm -hmm. It could... I guess it could lead to a lot of chaos. You're not ready yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so... <sighs> Um, and we find out that Jenny and Dean are having trouble. Oh, convenient. Things aren't Trouble in out. paradise. Yeah, well. <laughs> Another thing working out for Harry Potter. Conveniently. <laughs> a lot of good luck for Harry and Just Lee as soon as he starts liking her. Hmm. Feet on the market. But we're back to some depressing shit. Yep. We get to go to lesson three. Um, and this is from the perspective of Morphin Gaunt. I remember the last name. That's good. <laughs> it's Gaunt. Gaunt. Um, Morphin Gaunt is the uncle of Voldemort. Of Voldemort. Um, so in this scene, we get to see what happens after they go to Azkaban. Um, we find out that Voldemort's grandfather dies in Azkaban and the nephew comes back and he's just kind of like this weird shack person uh, who just kind of lives and exists there. Yeah. And he's got the ring. But he has the ring. so. And that's what Voldemort is coming back to get because at this point I believe he's learned about Horcruxes. I think so, yeah. Um, I mean, he's been to Hogwarts. Yeah. He's learning... I think this is during Hogwarts. Yeah, this is probably was one of his first Horcruxes, or one of the first. Yes. He's experimenting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he he gets the ring and he can. He um. He must have imperiused Morphin. He somehow gets his uncle to kill Tom Riddle Senior. Right. His father, his Muggle father. Because he's disgusted with him. Yeah. Um, and that's how we find out that Voldemort got the ring. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much all it was for. And how his dad dies. Um, and then we get the second memory. And that's Slughorn's fake, fake memory. Where Tom Riddle's like, what do you know about Horcruxes, <laughs> sir? They are bad. <laughs> what? Why would you ask a question like this? Get out of my office! <laughs> Don't you ever ask me about those again! <laughs> How could you? Oh, yeah. I'm telling Dumbledore right now! <laughs> I had nothing to do with any of this! <laughs> take my name off this memory! <laughs> what? Just take my name off it! Why are you telling me this? I had nothing to do with this! <laughs> I wish they would have done it like that. You see my ass? Look how covered it is. <laughs> Look how covered this ass is, Tom. Do you see it? <laughs> that's kind of, that's interesting. I wonder if uh, if there could be any more stories about wizards <laughs> falsifying memories to cover their own asses. That'd be so funny. It's quite a rabbit hole we can go down with down there. Uh, yeah. 
But for now, Slughorn has uh, falsified his memory <laughs> to cover his own ass. <laughs> and they need the real one. Yeah. Which Dumbledore tells Harry, like, yeah, that's not what really happened. Nice try. Yeah. And this uh, is actually one of the very few memories that made it into the, the movie. Yeah, they cut out a lot of the memories, which was disappointing. Almost everything but the orphanage. Yeah. I liked the movie. I liked the sixth movie, but would have liked to see some more Voldemort memories. Yeah. And uh, a big trade, maybe a little bit of, a little less of Ron having a crush on Romilda after he ate those chocolates. <laughs> maybe we could have sped that up a little bit. Yeah. For example, maybe got a little snuck a memory in there instead. Yeah, we didn't need to see... There were some moments I feel like. Mm. Well, there was some. There was an important kind of thing to that, which I think might justify a little bit. I don't mean cut it out, but maybe speed it up a little bit. Yeah, they, yeah, I feel they like milked it a little. Out. with like, oh, can I meet her? Oh, yeah. It's like okay. Comedy relief, boy. Get on with it. Yeah, they. I could have been sped up. It was right. definitely necessary. Kind right. Of. And, uh, well, yeah, but, like, <laughs> like the Bazoar. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Harry didn't even know what that it. was in the movie. In the movie, he just pops it in there, and it's like, how do you know Oh, how to this do that? this thing should do it. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> all right, let's just, I guess Harry just knows what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, already? Yeah, I mean, that kind of. Yeah. Uh, well, what, what po- poisoned him was the, uh, the wine. That uh, was supposed to be a gift for Dumbledore. Right, again. Again. So we know somebody's after Dumbledore, mm-hmm. but we don't know whom. But we do. We do. It's, it's not one. And he's almost <laughs> doing a bad job on purpose. Yeah. Which Dumbledore actually brings up later. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's like he's kind of trying to make it look like he's trying, but boy, none of these plots are working, are they? <laughs> yeah. So... So after that ordeal um, that lasted too long in the movie, um, Ron's in the infirmary, the Ron hospital wants wing. Hermione. And uh, the whole thing where Lavender runs up and she calls him Wan Wan. <laughs> and uh, God, that got annoying in the books. Wan Wan. Wan Wan. Wan Wan. Yeah, that's He's, sickening. Ugh, God. I don't hate Realistic, Lavender. Realistic though. Yeah, Lavender, you know what? Lavender gets a bad rap. She's just an annoying girl. Yeah. She's not s- evil. Yeah. She's just some regular annoying girl. I always thought it was her that, that poisoned him. Ron? Yeah, but it turned out it was just like aged chocolates from back when girls were trying to get Harry to take them to Slughorn's party. Yeah. And you're just like, I'm taking one of them. Yeah. It was uh, Romilda's Romilda. chocolates. Yeah. And Ron ate way too many of them. Yeah. He OD'd on that chocolate. He OD'd on chocolate. <laughs> so, and then, of course, uh, Ron says Hermione in his sleep. Hermione. Oh. And then Lavender gets hurt and she runs away. Yeah, that's so. that's how it ended in the movie. Yeah. But in the book, it, it drug on a little longer. Right. I'm okay with the ending sooner. Yeah. Uh, so we get to Gryffindor's second game in the book. Ron's out and McLagan's in. We find out how much of a douche McLagan is. Blah, blah, blah. He talks a big game. He talks a big game. He tries to take control. He tries to be captain. Harry gets knocked out. Yeah. We wake up. Harry's back in the hospital wing. And he is still trying to figure out what to do about Malfoy. We didn't even clarify at the end of their last lesson that Harry was given a job. He had to recover the actual memory. Right. Everybody probably knows that already. They know. They know. Um, So that's the big thing. Yes, so Harry's still... He's procrastinating. He's, yeah, procrastinating. More concerned with what Malfoy's doing than this big, important job that Dumbledore has given him. When really it's like, don't worry about Malfoy. I know he's trying to kill me. It's not going so well. (laughs) Yeah. Like, can you just do what I asked you, though? Do this thing, Harry. Don't... Do it. Right. Uh, but Harry summons Creature. He once summons he, him. Once he realizes that... I hate Creature. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't hate him. He's just nasty. Yeah, he's a little All right. He summons that, that little nasty. Well, that was a funny moment because him and Dobby were, like, wrestling. 
Yeah. <laughs> and they both pop in. He's like, he was like, I need you guys to follow Malfoy. Okay. Yeah. That's like, who's creature even loyal to these days? Sirius is dead. He has. I mean, he he was left to Harry, so he. So he has, has to, to do listen. But I mean, it's even he was funnier. barely loyal to Sirius. I know. So I mean, how loyal is he to Harry? It, it, that was the thing. Like Dobby was like, "I'll do it." Yeah. Oh, of course Dobby will do it. Anything for Harry. Yeah. But it oh. was it was funny to see how Creature reacted because he loves the Malfoys. Yeah. Because of uh, Bellatrix. Right. And then um, Narcissa are both from the Black family. Right. So then, let's see, after that, the memory of Voldemort working at Borkin and Burks. Yes, we get to lesson four. Which is conveniently where that wardrobe is. It is. But here we get to see Voldemort's um, desires for elaborate heirlooms. Right. So he meets up with this, uh, what's her name, Hepzibah, Hebs yeah. uh, who just so happens to own the cup of Helga Hufflepuff mm -hmm. and the um, locket of Salazar Slytherin, and Voldemort wants it. He wants it. He wants that shit. He wants it so bad that uh, he kills her and blames her elf and yeah. takes her trinkets. <laughs> he, he wants it so bad he takes it. Um, Have you ever just wanted someone shit so bad <laughs> you killed him and you took it? You kill him, you blame their house elf, and you get away with the money. I've been there, girl. No, I haven't. Never. Uh, I think we've all been there. The curse, and now that you have the curse of the defar defi divorce, the defense against the dark arts professor. Yes. So at the end of this, I believe there was another memory where uh, and this is after Voldemort's killed some people and he's kind of like losing it. Uh -huh. He comes back to Hogwarts and asks for a job to be the defense against the dark arts teacher. Yeah. Because he wants more... Access. He yes, he was using it to get access to more magical items mm -hmm. that he could use as horcruxes. And Dumbledore turns him away. Yeah. Like, uh, after you're that, a little too evil, dude. Yeah. After that moment was an interesting thing where Dumbledore says... And after I turned him away, we haven't held a professor for the defense against the dark arts for more than a year. Wow. Which was kind of cool. Hmm. He cur oh, yeah, okay, all right, that makes sense. Yeah. He cursed it. I forgot about that. Did you? Yeah, I forgot that he'd cursed the position. Yep. That makes a lot of sense, though. A little crybaby. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Snape's a butthurt little bitch. <laughs> Look, look at, at Voldemort. Yeah, look at Voldemort's fucking ass. Yeah. Jeez, God. God. You wouldn't let me be the defense against Dark Arts Professor? No one can. God, Snape waited for how many years? Yeah. A long time. <laughs> Snape's got a lot of patience. Snape yeah. has way too much patience to oh be called a next God, year. yeah. He really does. I ooh. Years of patience. I don't know if I could. I, I don't know. That's a long time to wait. But Creature and Dobby catch Malfoy. Yep, they they did their job and they discover Malfoy is using the room of requirement. And it's Harry's how's it feel, Harry? You're on the other side of the room requirement yeah, now. He knows now what he's now someone else is sneaking in and you can't do what he's done. Yeah. Oh oh yeah, there was another funny moment there where as as a lookout Crab and Goyle were using a polyjuice potion <laughs> to transform into little girls and use these, um... Crab and Goyle are fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Some weird They're characters. They're weird guys. Um, they serve their purpose. What? You know how people say when you're bad in school, like, oh, you're just, you're gonna pump gas someday, huh? You're gonna be a ditch digger and shit like that. You know, it's, it's mean, and, yeah. and I don't agree with it to say, like, oh, that job's for stupid people. You know what I mean? Right. But, but people say that. What's the wizarding world equivalent of that? <laughs> like, what, do people, what would people say, like, Crab and Goyle, you're gonna graduate and just be this. <laughs> I have no someday. idea. 
I, I wonder, like, what's the shit job in Magic Town? What is that? It's like, what is the worst possible job you could have? I mean, I'd probably have to think about it. Because yeah. we're kind of, we're in, you know, Hogwarts. We're in, like, Diagon Alley. We're in the nice parts of town. We'd have to think about it. But we, we can we can bookmark that. What's the shit job in Magic Town? We'll figure it out. Yeah. But anyway, that's what Crab and Goyle, that's what they would have. I'm sure. So, that was funny to, um, to kind of see that. Yeah. The little baby girls. <laughs> Keep them look out. Um, but then we get to... I don't know how, but Harry ends up meeting up with Morning Myrtle again. Mm -hmm. And she talks about this boy that comes into the bathroom and cries. Yeah. And that was the end of it. Which um, is Malfoy. Yeah, it's Malfoy crying. Oh, boo-hoo. That's the only place he can go and cry and get away with it. Because everyone just, no one wants to go in that bathroom because of Morning Myrtle. Yeah. In the first place. But then if they do hear crying, they're just going to think it's her. Yeah. It's the only safe place Malfoy can go to cry. I can't do it. It's so it's close. It's a lot of pressure. He's only, yeah. he's only 16. 16, yeah. Yeah. He's got to kill his professor that's one of the most powerful wizards of all time. Yeah, it's a, it's a little insane. <laughs> it's, a mu it's a bit much to ask. But after that, um, Harry runs into Tonks. Again. Again, and she looks even worse. And at this moment, he brings up Sirius, and when he brings up Sirius, she kind of like reacts to it. Mm -hmm. And Harry gets this idea in his head that, oh my God, Tonks was in love with Sirius, Sirius. Um, which I kind of believed because I never really knew much about Tonks right. from the movies. So I was like, whoa, where is this going? When I read it. And that was that, like, Tonks just kind of, it just kind of fizzled out after that. I just had this brief encounter with her. She's just randomly there, like, keeping control over Hogwarts. Yeah. And then it was gone. Um, and then we get to the burial, Bert, Bert, Aragog's dead. <laughs> er, 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 he, he did. He did. Um, and Hagrid sends... Harry, this uh, tear soaking leather, letter, not leather. Um, and at first, the, the gang's like, no, we can't. Hogwarts on lockdown. We can't get out anyway. Yeah. And Harry's like, I got Malfoy and I got Slughorn. Like, at this point, we completely forget about Harry's mission. Right. Like, he's busy doing all these other things. Um,. So Hermione lays the smack down on him. She's like, you need, to, you need to figure out what to do about Slughorn. This is important. Dumbledore told you to do this. You've already failed him once. Mm -hmm. Get the job done. Mm -hmm. So here's like, all right, yeah, fine. And I believe it was Hermione that recommends using Felix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he does. And in this, both in the movie and the book, there was just this weird moment where, like, it's not Harry anymore. Felix. <laughs> <laughs> and they like portray it that way, like this yeah. cheesy this isn't Harry. It's Felix. I kinda like it though. <laughs> yeah, it's kinda like a it's like a Peter Parker from episode or yeah. Spider Man three. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new man in town. <laughs> yeah, he just he's this nerdy boy who just gets all this confidence and just doesn't give a doesn't man. give a hoot. If I was in the I would abuse Felix Felicis oh, if yeah. I was in the wizarding world. So it's, it takes like six months to make. Well, I'd abuse it. Yeah. I'd, 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 I'd buy it. I'd waste money on that shit. That could be pricey. So he conveniently decides to see Hagrid. Yes. Turns out that that worked out after yeah, all. Yeah, instead of going to see... Um, the Slughorn wanted the spider juice. Yes. He, uh, he wants the spider venom. The yeah. giant arachnid venom. And there was this weird moment where they portray Slughorn as kind of like stealing uh, ingredients yeah. in the movie. Yeah. And he was talking to Professor Sprout in the book, like, casually. Like, here's... Professor Sprout was like, here's the ingredients you asked for. Maybe they just didn't want to, like, get Professor Sprout. 
Professor Maybe, Sprout yeah. has not been in the movies since like the first the one. first movie. So I mean, let's go ask this random bitch. But is she even still alive? I I don't know. Yeah. So I mean, that could have just been like a. Do we really want to hire on another actress for like one second? Come on. I could see that. That makes a little more sense now. Yeah. Uh, but Harry convinces Horace to go to the funeral, which was a beautiful scene both in the book and in the movie. It was touching. It was touching, it was funny, and then it got super serious. Yeah. And we got to see the real Slughorn. Slughorn had a little much to drink. He got a little weepy. It, it was cool to see such a strong character break down like that. Yeah, well, I mean, I get it. Like, he kind of blamed himself mm-hmm. for what happened. And Harry's like... My mother died. <laughs> it's like, I know how much she meant to you. He kind of guilt trips him. Oh, yes. Hard. Uh, it's like, yeah, if you want to honor my mom, you'll do this. Yes. If you want to honor her death and what she went through. Make her death worth something. Yes. You'll give me this. <sighs> Ooh, okay, buddy. That's a little. Perfect words, though, to like break down well, somebody as strong as Horace. Yeah, he said, what he, he said what he had to say to get what he wanted. Yeah. Good job, Felix. It was funny to kind of see that um, bonding moment between Hagrid and uh, Horace, too. Yeah. That was funny. Both of them getting drunk like they're in a pub. (laughs) Wow, I wish I'd known that spider when he was alive. (laughs) You would have loved him. Yep. So that was important. And then immediately after, Harry's running back because he can feel Felix Mm -hmm. wearing off. He gets locked out of the portrait. And then... I believe the fat lady says that Dumbledore's back in his office. So he's like, oh, I've got the memory. Why don't I just go straight there? Yeah, there's that moment where, like, he wants to just go up there on his own. Cause he, and he remembers the old password. It was, like, lemon something. Damn it. I think of a different book where Harry was, like, he tried to remember the password to get up to, like, Dumbledore's office. This one was something like an eclair or something. Oh, yeah, it was, like, a, a food, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> it's always eat. some kind of food. Um, but, like, they've changed the password since then. Yeah. Then, like, someone came around. But on his way, he runs past the Room of Requirement, and Trelawney is there. Hmm. And she gets, um... I forget what spell it was. It might have been Expelliarmus, but... She gets thrown out of the room, and Harry... Harry recognizes that it's Malfoy, and he can hear him cheering. Like, he's just succeeded in something. Mm-hmm. So, um... Harry knows Malfoy's up to no good, and he approaches Trelawney, and is, like, asking her what happened, and, like, he's trying to convince her to go tell Dumbledore. He's on his way to go see Dumbledore now. Mm-hmm. Trelawney drops something that sets off Harry and that was that he discovered that Snape was in Snape was there when Trelawney gave the prophecy to Dumbledore Mm -hmm. so Snape knows everything right and he gets it in his mind that this is the reason or um, Snape is who sold out his mom and dad yeah and suggested that it was Harry so he's blaming Snape for his parents' death now, and her uh, Harry's mad at Dumbledore for not telling him because he knew. Mm-hmm. So he's going up there heated, and uh, Dumbledore's like, "Hey, I found a Horcrux," and he's yeah. like, "What? <laughs> you, you found one?" So it's like this weird moment where he's both excited and extremely upset, and I think. Uh, yeah, Dumbledore asks him about it. And he, he goes off a little bit, but... I can't remember what happened. It wasn't too important. Um, and then we get to see the memory. Uh, the, the real, real memory. one. And we find out that Voldemort did indeed actually ask about Horcrux. Horcruxes. Um, and Slughorn does tell him what that is yeah and how to make one and uh, how it's splitting your soul and the, i think that big moment is where Voldemort says well what can you do it more than once 
<laughs> and Slughorn's like, what? <laughs> and that's kind of like, that's that moment. That disturbing little moment. Yep. And then um, that's when Dumbledore kind of explains, like, that's where he's been. Mm-hmm. That's what he's been doing this whole year is hunting down these horcruxes. Yeah. Um, so after that, you know, we leave on a good note, and it's the next day, and I believe uh, it's the final Quidditch match. Mm-hmm. And um, Ron and Lavender broke up, finally. Finally. And uh, Harry is looking out on his Marauder's map now that he's satisfied Dumbledore's needs he's back to hunting down Malfoy mission number one <laughs> numero uno I mean yeah um and he discovers Malfoy up in the bathroom mm-hmm. with Moaning Myrtle right crying probably yes and uh he he walks in or he doesn't walk in he just he peeks in he and he sees in. he sees Malfoy crying and Malfoy... And it's like, damn, give the guy some space. He's yeah. crying. As soon as Malfoy sees him there, it's just like, it's it's instant battle. Like, yeah. You cross the line. You saw me crying! Yeah. Like, what, what <laughs> am I supposed to do? And he even, like, does try to use a curse on Harry. To be fair, yeah. He tries to crucio him. He, he tries to crucio him. And as soon as Malfoy steps over that line... Harry uses the spell... Sectum from the half blood prince's spell book or potion book. Yes. Which Harry has no idea what it's going to do. Didn't yeah. it just say something like for enemies? Yeah, that's what it, it said for enemies and that's it. Now yeah. Harry's used other spells irresponsibly on Ron without yeah. knowing what they do. Yeah. Which was uh, super concerning because he could have just killed his best friend. Yeah. Sectum Sempre, Sectum Sempra, whatever, however you pronounce it is like a sword. Like it just like it lashes lacer- out. lacerates your body, yes. your whole body. It just slices you. Yeah. And the movie is kind of portrayed as like a shotgun blast. Yeah. He just like starts bleeding. Yeah. Like a, a lot of blood it's starts pooling up under his... Spots of blood just, yeah. he just bleeds. Mm-hmm. Um, and luckily Snape was there to, to catch that. And uh, Snape. It's Snape's spell. Yeah, he recognizes it. So he was the exact right person to show up. Yeah. Um, and to fix that situation. Yeah, he was just luckily there in the movie. I, I think it was Myrtle that went and started screaming through the halls that murder just happened. Yeah, you always just, he killed him! <laughs> he killed him! Yeah. yeah. Which, that would have been really funny. But I like voting Myrtle. That was, that was a really good scene in the movie. Yeah, right. they, they did a good job of that. I'm glad that one did not get cut. Harry's like, what have I done? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean for this to happen. Yeah. And uh, you get to see Snape heal Malfoy. Malfoy. And then immediately after, Snape looks at Harry and goes, let me see your potion book. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. So Harry doesn't even question him. He just takes off. And he meets up with Ron. He's like, I need your potion book. Mm-hmm. Snape is asking, I almost killed Malfoy. I need your potion book. Mm-hmm. And Ron's like, sure, sure, okay. And even still, I don't think I suspected Snape. No, I didn't either. In the book. I didn't I either. still thought, well, like, well, he's involved with the Dark Lord. Yeah. He probably knows. He knows. And I'm like, that's Snape. It was always Snape. Yeah. Very well done. Yeah. Um, but Harry stumbles upon the Room of Requirement again. Uh-huh. And he hides his book in there. Um, but he's also discovered the room that Malfoy's been going to the whole time, but he doesn't know. Right. It's just this cluttered room with a bunch of artifacts. A bunch of and stuff in it. Old. Uh, like, even some of Fred and George's uh, things from the f- uh, sixth book are in there. Yeah. From when they were getting rid of uh, Umbridge. It's just where the all the... Frisbees and stuff. Yeah, like all the lost things at Hogwarts yeah. end up. So it's like a, a room of trash. The and lost and found. Things, yeah. <clears throat> so he hides his book in there, and he goes back to meet up with Snape. As Snape opens it up, and he reads, I, I love this part in the book. He reads out <laughs> Runal Waslin. Runal Waslin. <laughs> for the name. And that was such a funny moment because <laughs> you find out that Ron got this quill from his brother's shop that was supposed to be. Like one of those magical quills that writes in the answer, the correct answer uh-huh. to a question. And 
<laughs> it turns out it was a faulty quote, so he couldn't even write his name right. And for some reason, that just tickled me. But again, that worked for Harry. Yeah, it did. Conveniently. Yeah, Snape's like, who is Runa Waslib? And Harry's like, it's my nickname. <laughs> <laughs> That was a funny moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, Snape knows that where else could Harry? Use? Oh yeah, that's his own spell. Of course he knows. Right. So it gives him detention instead, mm-hmm. and Harry misses the last Quidditch match. So doesn't doesn't even get to hear it. Yeah. He's just in this suspenseful moment, and I'm pretty sure I didn't remember this until now, but Snape made him. Um, go through reports of like when when kids got in trouble and he made him go through his father's old reports oh. when he got detention and stuff and for what he did just to like forgot about that <laughs> just to piss him off because he he's so like defending against his dad my dad was awesome <laughs> my dad wasn't a bully yeah kind of, your dad was yeah, kind of a dick dude your dad was he was a, a big old bully <laughs> Um, but then after we find out that, uh, Gryffindor won, or they won by enough to not get in last, which was mm-hmm. important to Harry because it was his first year as a, as a lead on the Quidditch team. Mm-hmm. So he didn't, he didn't lose it for the Gryffindor. Um, they might have gotten first, I don't remember. Okay. What I remember is that Harry and Jenny smooch. But yeah, after... They After snogged the big a little win. bit. And that uh, started their relationship in the book. Um, so let's just start with after that. Yeah. Um, Harry tells Trelawney, <laughs> he just kind of leaves her there after he's upset with the um, the Snape thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and he goes up to Dumbledore. Dumbledore's like, hey, I found this Horcrux. Are you ready to go? Harry's like, what? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm very angry. <laughs> Um, so he, he gets to, uh, explain that whole thing, and then they, he, he tells Harry to go get his cloak and pack Mm -hmm. a few things. So he runs back, and he tells Ron and Hermione that he's leaving, and he needs them to watch over Malfoy. He thinks Malfoy just... Like he's the one. He, he's the one. He's in their room of requirement right now. I need you guys to get He's the the key to all this. It's (laughs) Malfoy. (laughs) I need you guys to get Dumbledore's army together and patrol the halls. Yeah. Because something's about to go down. And take the rest of Felix Felicis. Mm -hmm. Which was super cool to me. Because, like, if it wasn't for that, they probably all would have been dead. Yeah. And in the movie, it's just like, he took it that one time and that was it. Yeah. In the book, he spaced it out. But in the beginning of the movie, there wasn't that big threat to all the students. Yeah. They left that all out. So... After that, he leaves, and Dumbledore and Harry go to the cave. They go to the ocean. It's a bad time. (laughs) I cry every time I read that part. I cry every time I see the movie. (laughs) It's horrid. Granted, we had a few drinks in us. No, I would have cried just as hard. I did not cry that hard because I was drunk. I wasn't expecting that. Paisley just... It's miserable. She lost it. It's so horrible because Dumbledore, you know, explains to Harry, like, you have to trust me. You have to do, do you what I say. You have to do this. You have to do this. No matter how much I beg you, no matter how much I tell you to stop, and please, it's hurting me, no matter how much it, it, it's torture, you're like, you have to keep making me drink it. And Harry's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and it's horrible. Yeah. Especially, like, God, I just remember, like, he just keeps asking for water. Like, it's so much more gruesome in the book. <laughs> it's painful. It's so much worse in the book. I mean, it's horrible in the movie. It's somehow even more painful in the book. Yeah, they did really well in the movie. Yeah. And he just, like, I, uh, God, he just keeps asking him for water. And Harry's, like, keeps giving him the poison. And saying, here, this is water, this yeah. is water, keep drinking it. And it's just, oh my god, that... <laughs> one more, one more. Just one more drink, and there's, like, seven more drinks. <laughs> yeah. And w- one thing I thought was odd was that in the movie, it's this, like, clear purple liquid in a seashell. Yeah. And in the book, it was, like, a goblet. It's green. And yeah. it's green. Dumbledore summons a goblet, and it's a green potion. 
Yeah, so that, that's just one of those small things that they change from book to movie that I'm like, why? Yeah. I mean, does that really... I don't Artistic know. license. Just a look, just an aesthetic thing. But, uh, you know, whatever. There were some context clues there where Dumbledore's burning from the inside and he's being tortured. It's like, there was a few things he said there kind of like piqued my interest of like the past of Dumbledore and what he's done. He's like... He said something like, oh, it wasn't my fault. I didn't mean this f- to happen. Yeah. Um, I don't think we know about that yet. And if, if if we do, I haven't learned it yet. But mm-hmm. Dumbledore's got a mysterious past. Definitely. So after we get through that painful scene, uh, we get to see that awesome fire spell that Dumbledore just Cast unleashes up. on the dead people. In which the was extremely unsettling both in book and movie yeah um that's nightmare fuel well done yeah very cool scene very fitting for yeah a villain like that Mm -hmm. um so they get back and harry has to apparate yeah back and he has he (laughs) apparates back to hogsmeade by accident by accident he's not strong enough Mm -hmm. and when they get back they see the dark mark has appeared at hogwarts Mm -hmm. And I kind of wish they kept this scene in the movie, because mm-hmm. after that, like Harry and Dumbledore, are like <laughs> they got on some wands. They're like going to Hogwarts. Mm-hmm. And it was just like an interesting thing to picture in my head is that Harry and Dumbledore going back to Hogwarts, uh, co-piloting on wands or not on wands, but um, brooms. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I thought that was funny. And then they get back. To the astronomy the tower. tower. And There's a big moment there for me. Yeah. That has to do with Harry's character. And it's that in the movie, Dumbledore says, Harry, get down and stay down there. Mm-hmm. But in the book, Dumbledore stupefies him, doesn't he? Petrificus totalis. Petrificus totalis. I get this myself. So he freezes He's stunned, him there. Yes. And the whole time, when Malfoy's up there doing his whole, I'm gonna do it, that all that shit, Harry's like, fighting, yeah. like, ah, let me at him, like a pit bull at the end of a leash. But in the movie, he's just like... He just stays he just there stands because Snape, down there. Snape tells him to. And it's like, what? Which I feel like is kind of weird out for of Harry. Character. It's really out of character. Like, he would have run up there. Which, I mean, that's such a simple thing to convey, is like... Why couldn't Dumbledore he froze just uh, him. froze him? That would have been fine also. I don't know. Uh, again, another small thing that they chose to change. For a big event. And I'm like, why though? It wouldn't have been that much harder to just do it this better way? And then that was like a way that Harry knew that Dumbledore had passed too. Was the spell wore off. Yeah. Like, a, like Harry could move and like he knew Dumbledore was dead. That was deep. Yeah. That was some deep shit. So he knew he knew Dumbledore was dead when he was able to move. Yeah. And that whole time was like, you realize that Dumbledore was using all of his power left in him to keep Harry there unmoving, to protect him, and quiet. Yeah. Um, but Malfoy doesn't have the guts to to finish the job, so Snape piles in, but and all these also, other Death Eaters. I, it partly. Draco doesn't have the guts to do it. But also, you know, Snape made that vow. Yeah. And if he had let Draco go through with it, which maybe he would have. Maybe Draco would have would have worked the pressure and like what's it like Bellatrix is up there, like telling him like do it. And, like all the Death Eaters are like, do it, Draco. I think I don't know. Maybe maybe Draco would have felt pressured and done it. So like but like by Snape stepping in. Yeah, too. Right, like cause because Dumbledore didn't want Draco to have his blood on his hands. Like, yeah. Because if, if Draco had been the one to kill Dumbledore, that would have been it for him. Yep. He never could have come back from that. He never could have had a normal life. It would have ruined him. Mm-hmm. So that was, that was, I mean, that was part of the plan as well. I mean, I don't know if Draco pushed out or not. If he would have done it or not. But that, but Snape stepping up and doing it was part of that, that vow. And his plan with Dumbledore. Yep. And it just so it happened. It just the way it happens in the movie and the way it just happens in the book is just so immediate. Yeah. <laughs> Harry's just like horror struck. Like, 
like this can't be happening. But let's let's move on because that's not the end. Right. Um, after that, we have this amazing battle at Hogwarts. All of these Death Eaters are there. We get to see some new villain characters. Uh, we get to see Fenrir, Greyback in action, uh, and he almost bites Harry. There's a moment there yeah. where he gets on top of We're Harry. We're just like, like oh shit, he's gonna be a werewolf. Yeah, he's gonna be a, w a werewolf now. Um, yeah, that there's, there's like a war almost. Yes. At the at the end of the sixth book. Well, that was cool to see too, cause like that's you got to see Dumbledore's army back in action, which was kind of a cool nod yeah. back to the last book, mm -hmm. and they're kicking ass. Um, and then, like you said, they all took some of the Felix Felicis. Yes, yeah, so they're doing all right. And they just lost Dumbledore. They lost Dumbledore. Hogwarts is in disarray. They're trying to protect the castle and, <sighs> and the students. And these Death Eaters are just going crazy. And I wonder... I th this seems like such a weird thing to leave out when you take this book to Hollywood. Yeah. You'd think, well... Such a good opportunity to make an amazing Yeah, scene. you'd think they would have ate that up. Yeah. Uh, so just, I don't know. And yeah, look, for example, that whole thing with the burrow getting burned down, they could have just left that out. Just left it out. And made this epic scene. And I remember at the time thinking, because by the time I'd watched the sixth movie, you know, I'd already read the seventh book, I believe. So, you know, I remember thinking at the time, like, oh, well, they're, they probably don't want to have a giant fight scene at the end of this movie, and then a giant fight scene at the end of the next one, too. But then they ended up splitting it into two parts. So they, like, totally could have gotten away with a giant, epic fucking fight scene. Yeah. Cause. They just kind of shrugged it off. I mean, even the setting for where it was just seemed empty and unfinished. Yeah. Like, they kill Dumbledore, they leave. Yeah. Whereas there was this huge chase scene, and it was intense, and... Yeah. Uh, Snape is after... And Harry, and... and, and everything. Harry's getting chased. There's this huge death eater that's throwing killing curses out everywhere. Like, not even aiming. It's just yeah. killing curse after killing curse after killing curse. Uh, they got the werewolf there, and he's chasing them down. And Dude, the Harry's, werewolf in the castle is scary. Yeah. Like, Harry's Jesus taking Christ. shortcuts to get to Snape, because yeah. he witnessed everything. Snape's trying to get Malfoy out of the castle. And then Harry catches up to Snape, and... <clears throat> He Bellatrix. tries sectum simper on him, doesn't he? Yes, but before that, Bellatrix and all these other Death Eaters are trying to take on Hagrid, uh, and they blow up Hagrid's cap cabin, and you can hear s you can hear Fang on the inside, uh, like on fire, um, and him trying to get out, and Hagrid's just trying to fight off these Death Eaters, and I mean, since I he's half giant, that. all these does Fang make it okay? Yeah, Fang makes it out. Oh Jesus! But it's I, I mean know. even like. She included that in there, like Fang was still in the cabin. Yeah. While they blew it up. Jesus. Um, and then they all leave, and it's it's down to uh, Hagrid's trying to fix up his cabin and get Fang out, and it's just Harry and Snape. Yeah. And uh, that moment where Harry's just yelling at Snape, "Fight back! Fight back! You coward!" Yeah. And again, Harry tries to Crucio, his enemy. Wait. You mean, do you mean Sectum Simper or Crucio? He, he he uses all of the spells. He uses Expelliarmus, Stupefy. He tries everything. He uses okay. uh, Crucio next, and then after Crucio, Snape's like, you don't have it in you to... Yeah. You don't have enough hate in you to do that. So he uses Sectum Simper, and then Snape's like, you dare use my own curse against me? And Harry's and then, like, what? Then we find out that Snape was... The Half Blood Prince. The Half Blood Prince. Mind blown. It wasn't Voldemort. So this is this this ultimate betrayal. Harry still believes that. Yeah, like Snape. Everyone believes it. The oh, reader. Yeah. Everyone believes Snape betrayed Dumbledore. My suspicions from the beginning. Yeah. Everyone thinks like, oh, I knew it. You were always a neck beauty asshole. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. It was always him. And the last chapter, Dumbledore's, Dumbledore's funeral by the lake. We get Dumbledore's funeral, and we get this weird mixed emotions with Harry, where he's keeps finding himself from having to hold back from laughing at the funeral, because like 
Hagrid's a mess with his brother, and that makes him laugh. And yeah. There's just other things which, I mean, everybody can relate with at a funeral. You don't know what to feel. Yeah. And then he gets the... He fin- it finally gets through to him that, you know, Dumbledore's not coming back. And we get that uh, lesson with death yet again at the end of the book. Yeah. And at this point, Harry decides he's not going back to Hogwarts next year. He knows. Like, shit is getting too real. He's got a job to finish. I need to finish what Dumbledore started. No more time for girls. No more time for Hogwarts shenanigans. And at first he's he's going by himself, and then of course Ron and Hermione, Hermione are Ron like, are like really, yeah, dude, we're going. No with way, you. man! You think we'd let you do this epic adventure by yourself? But Ginny can't go. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, we, like, no, like we're coming, but no, yeah, break up with her though. Yeah. I thought when he broke up with her, I'm like, good. <laughs> when I read the books, because I'm like, he just had a little fling. And I mean, really, like, are they really right for each other? No. It's he's just so, going through another phase. Yeah, and I'm like, okay. So I just thought, like, okay, they're, they're broken up now. I didn't think they were going to get back together. But they do immediately. Yeah. And I'm like, what was the point of that then? Yeah. But I get it. He's like, I'm going to keep you, protect you, and I'm going to keep you safe. It's not safe. Yeah, that was his motives. It's like, yeah, all right, I get it. And then the book just kind of ends on this sentimental image mm-hmm. and uh, setting that I thought just perfectly melts into the next book. Like, it's it's almost a direct continuation. Mm-hmm. Like, the last two books are one. Mm-hmm. I could see. Um, and it ends with them just kind of saying, well, we've got one more thing to look forward to, and it's the wedding mm-hmm. of Bill and Floor, which I don't even think I mentioned they were together. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Bill and Floor together. Uh, Surprise. Spoilers. (laughs) Spoiler alert. Spoilers. Then that's the end of it. And I came home, and I directly picked up Seven. I'm like, I gotta go. I gotta keep going. It's going down. Whereas I had some time to breathe between Order of the Phoenix and Mm -hmm. Half-Blood Prince. But, like, I picked up Seven, and I kept going. Which is a good thing. That's a good sign. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great sign. Um, and now, I'm already to the point where I'm right before the end of the first part of the last movie. Oh, okay. So, if if we're going to do part yeah. one and part two podcast of... Well, we could almost do a part one and two of this. Yeah, I know. It's, it's two hours. We're going on two hours, which is... So, you can, uh, if you want to... The longest you, we've done. Yeah. You either trim it or we split might, it in half. We might have to split it in half. Yeah, that's up to you. We'll see, um, see how it, uh, how that. Two hours is a out. long time to sit down. It sure is. I wouldn't make it. That's where we are. We lost Ethan at the very beginning. Yeah. He didn't even any, die. any, any last words, Ethan? So, Ethan, mm-hmm. how many? What would you rate Harry Potter? Six. You know the internet's listening, right? What would you rate Harry Potter six, Ethan? No. No. He says no. <laughs> All right. Well. You're letting me down, man. I give it ten spladoinkles. Out of I ten. would. I would also give it. I give it a ten. It's, it's solid ten. Solid good read. You know what? Actually, I'm going to give it eight Spladoinkles. Eight? Out of eight Spladoinkles. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Perfect score. What about you, Badger? Badger, what do you think? No. So it gets a no from Ethan and Badger. Well, that's uh, disappointing. <laughs> I don't know the conversion rates of a uh, nose to spoodwinkles, but <laughs> we'll leave that for the next time. Uh, that was it. That's that's the analysis of of Half Blood Prince, the long awaited return of the Harry Potter subjects. <laughs> let's let's call it two hours. That's good. Good enough, I guess. Right night, little badger.